Joe Burrow and the Bengals are traveling to Baltimore on Wednesday to play the Ravens on Thursday night football. Here from Burrow on what it means to enter aggressive mode. Plus, Jake and I share our thoughts ahead of the primetime showdown. You are locked on Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up and welcome in to another edition of the Locked on Bengals podcast. He's Jake Lisko. I'm James Rapine. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube, follow wherever you get your podcasts, and maybe leave us a five-star review. That would be really, really nice. Today's show brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Jake, Joe Burrow talked on Tuesday. He admitted that he was sore. I still can't really wrap my head around the idea that the Bengals are traveling, especially if you're listening to this on Wednesday. They're traveling on Wednesday to Baltimore. The past couple Thursday night games have been at home, and so the road aspect of this has totally thrown me off. It's such a short week. We've talked about how it's a short week. There are all these different factors going into it. Joe Burrow, when he was addressing the media, is like, yeah, it's our Friday today. And a lot of our listeners wish it was their Friday, too. It's unfortunately not for them. And unfortunately, it is for the Bengals, who have to deal with the Ravens now, one of the better teams in the NFL, despite what was a, a pretty crazy loss to the Browns last week or, or a couple of days ago, I guess. Still one of the better teams in the NFL throughout this season have to go on the road, going to have to do it shorthanded, and they're going to need Joe Burrow to be at his very, very best. I mean, top-tier Joe Burrow, not a few spectacular plays Joe Burrow. It needs to be spectacular plays Joe Burrow plus, and I, and I think that that is something that he alluded to a little bit. He talked about aggressive mode in his presser. We're, we're going to hear what he had to say about that as well, but I thought that was the most interesting part of what he shared in his presser this week because it kind of goes back and, and ties into what we talked about yesterday, James. They need that playmaker, Joe Burrow, right now when they don't have their full complement on both sides of the ball. And you're right. You're going to hear from Joe Burrow in, in just a second. I think that's such a, a key to Thursday's game is balancing it out and, and being able to do it consistently throughout the game. That doesn't mean be aggressive every single play but picking the spots to do so. And that's what Joe Burrow discussed when entering aggressive mode, as he put it. So this is what he had to say on Tuesday. Something that you got to feel out. Um, you know, in that second half, I, I entered aggressive mode and, you know, obviously probably you know, made quite a bit of plays and then, you know, made a couple decisions that I probably wouldn't have made had the, the situation not been what it was. Uh, you know, some mistakes that you'd like to have back, but in the same sentence you are, are trying to be aggressive knowing that their offense is playing really well knowing that their defense is playing well and, and you're trying to make plays so uh, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm upset about you know any of the decisions that I made obviously you'd like to have a couple back but uh, I think for the most part I need to get better in that situation of turning the switch on and off um, being aggressive in spots and then knowing when to take the foot off the pedal. Yeah, I think it depends on the situation. You know, I tried to, you know, early in my career, I was, you know, making a lot of those plays and then, uh, you know, you try to pick your spots to to make those. And, I, you know, there were spots that I had to uh, on Sunday. And, you know, a lot of times you don't. A lot of times you can just play in the structure of the offense and, you know, you're moving the ball well and, you know, taking advantage of what the defense is giving you. And sometimes the defense is playing well and you have to flip that switch and go into aggressive mode and try to make some plays. Uh, that was one of those days. And he was asked if he thinks that Thursday night is going to be one of those times where he has to enter aggressive mode and just be in it throughout the game. And he said he, he's got to make his decision there and balance it out. And I, I think that's, that's the key to this team reaching its full potential right now. I don't expect them to have T. Higgins. Maybe he surprises me. Uh, I obviously expect them to be shorthanded on defense. And so they're going to have to score 
on Thursday night and and score a bunch of points. And I think the path to that is it starts with Joe Burrow being aggressive, but also knowing when not to make the throw like he did in the the red zone to Tyler Boyd, where there were multiple Texans in the area. The Drew Sample throw, I don't mind as much. I think it points out the tight end flaw on the roster a bit as much as anything, but we'll see if he can balance that out. He's going to have to be really darn good, I think, for the Bengals to win on, on Thursday. And we've seen him do it before, so it's not to say it's impossible by any means. Like Joe Burrow is the reason that we're so bullish on the Bengals every year, right? Is the the floor that he provides the team. He needs to, and he does this, not to say he doesn't do this, but he needs to continue to elevate the team when they need a big win in a big spot, in a difficult situation, on a short week, on the road. And I know I've been belaboring this point, but it, it really is a difficult spot for this team, which I believe is a good team. Just a week ago, roughly, we sat down and recorded a podcast when we agreed that, yeah, the Bengals are one of the good teams in the NFL. I think the Texans are pretty good too, but I also think the Bengals should have beaten the Texans. They should not have looked like they did for, what was it, the four or five straight possessions in the middle of that game. And, and a lot of that is, you know, they couldn't get into a rhythm offensively and, and there's some play calling issues potentially in that. There's some decision-making from Joe Burrow tied up in that as well. There's Joe Burrow's vision of the field tied up in that as well. And while his numbers are still really good, you know, he had a couple of picks, but, you know, the, the yards per attempt were there. He got outside of the pocket, found Jamar Chase for the big play, rallied them back to what should have been a game-winning touchdown. If, if you don't have those drought possessions against the Texans, then you're talking about an entirely different game and you're putting all this pressure on C.J. Stroud and that Texans offense instead of the pressure being on the Bengals offense to try to play from behind and against the Ravens. Just look at the last four games these teams have played. There's a reason the Bengals talk about the Ravens shrinking the game and mm-hmm. reducing the number of possessions in the game. You can't have empty possessions. If, if you're going to go five straight possessions doing nothing, well, that might be five out of your six possessions against the Ravens. You can't have that many three and outs in this game. That's asking a lot of your defense going up against a really good rushing attack. And so, yeah, I, I think a lot of the pressure on the Bengals offense is on Joe Burrow, fair or not, because he is the reason that they were in that game against the Texans and, and part of the reason that they, they didn't win the game with a couple of those interceptions you mentioned and those possessions I just mentioned. But if they can get that really high level of play from him that we've seen from the last few weeks, that we saw from him a ton last year in that big winning streak, that's how you get the win and you survive the short week. You get the mini buy. You hopefully get a little bit healthier. You get into the rest of the schedule. And there are some keys that we'll share here because we'll have our, our crossover tomorrow with Locked on Ravens. And uh, l- let's get to them. Some thoughts, keys, whatever you want to call it. Obviously, we, we normally do our keys videos, our final video, final podcast of the week. But uh, I, I at least have some in my head, even though it's a quick turnaround. I've, I've, I'm all in on Baltimore, even though as we record this, the, the Texans game ended about 49 hours ago, roughly but uh, certainly focused on the Ravens. So let's get to that coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. That's right, for free. You like free. I like free. Everybody likes free. LinkedIn Jobs is free. LinkedIn has simple tools, screening questions that make it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and who you'd like to hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Today's show is also brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. With the Bengals playing on Thursday night, well, it is the perfect time to get in on the action with FanDuel because they're the only game in town, Bengals-Ravens, and you can make Thursday night that much spicier. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. So 
You think Joe Burrow is going to put on his Superman cape, handle business in Baltimore, which, let's be honest, road underdog. I'm sure Burrow is going to embrace that narrative. Well, if you think so, you throw five bucks on the Bengals, and if they win, you get 150 bucks in bonus bets. All you have to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on right now. Again, FanDuel.com slash locked on for all the spreads, player props, over-unders, and so much more. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. James, let's talk about some of those early thoughts on this Bengals-Ravens matchup. Maybe outside of Joe Burrow. I think Joe Burrow is, you know, factors one through three in this game, but that's not all. The Bengals likely to be down Trey Hendrickson and Sam Hubbard, and that is where I look next. Personally, I'm curious to know where you go next, but to me, given Lamar Jackson, given what we know the Ravens offense wants to do, the absence in the trenches for the Bengals and the way that those backups play and, and what kind of level of replacement they get out of those backups and expanded roles is what I look at next. For sure. It, it, that's, that's the key. I was talking to Jermaine Pratt on Tuesday and it was, what's the key to stopping the Ravens? And he was like, well, it starts with the defensive line. <laughs> and then he was like, and then the linebackers and then it goes back. And that's probably what he would say any week when it comes to a a run heavy team, like the Ravens, that is obviously explosive. You got to win in the trenches, but this week there's that added focus. And and whether it's miles Murphy, Joseph Osai, cam sample, I'm going to throw Zach Carter in there in the middle, maybe Josh Tupo, which I I think he's got a shot. Your guy, Josh Tupo tackling Lamar Jackson in space back in 2019. You haven't forgotten. I let the people know, Uh, you know, I, I think that this defense they have to cook up the just the right thing if Lou can. A- and it still starts with these guys kind of outperforming their expectations because I'm not sure expectations. You could say Miles Murphy, first round pick, expectations high. Does anybody in the fan base right now or analyst wise expect a ton out of Miles Murphy on Thursday night? Like he's going to play a lot, but I don't think we know what to expect or fans have, have soured on him already, which is probably unfair, it is unfair. So, that's where it starts. Can you exceed expectations or set set a standard without potentially Sam and without Trey that that is higher than what we've seen from the the backup lineman in the past? So it's it starts there. I, I would start though when it comes to that defensive line with DJ Reader. You need him to just be an animal and, and just be dominant and be one of those guys that is and he always is a difference maker, but the difference maker. Because that's kind of the only dude you have that that is in there for what he for that run stopping ability, which is such a big deal for this Ravens team. BJ Hill obviously has to play well too, but I think it starts with DJ. Yeah, I think you know BJ Hill. Let's make sure we don't forget about him. And you didn't, but he's been really good on those stunts and twists with defensive ends the last couple of weeks, and that's a way you can get Miles Murphy and turn his athleticism loose. Try to get some pressures with Murphy. See if Murphy and that elite athleticism, the reason the Bengals drafted him, can deal with Lamar Jackson if he can get a free run at him because the Bengals had a number of free runs at Lamar Jackson in week two and they were not able to bring him down. So it's not like it's an easy job, but there is something there. But you're right, DJ Reader, the heart and soul of that defensive line, especially when those guys are out, Sam Hubbard and Trey Hendrickson, who neither of which we don't know exactly yet what's going on at the practice, very late practice on on tuesday wanted to make sure we got this episode out to you but we'll we'll keep an eye on the injury report of course but dj reader the guy that they have outside of that in a very tough test again one of the better offensive lines not necessarily in terms of individual names but the way they played as a unit and and the way they have played as individuals are playing pretty good football this year for lamar jackson and lamar jackson of all the quarterbacks in the nfl one of the hardest to bring down very elusive very manip- manipulative of defensive players the angles they take very adept at that quick subtle sidestep to buy time and we know what he can do as a runner we've seen that stuff as a, as a thrower this year a little bit in the todd munkin offense and he, he has a competent array of receivers for the most part of course last time these teams played we talked a ton about the rookies a flowers he's probably the best of the bunch Mark Andrews also in that conversation, certainly maybe 
should just say Mark Andrews is still the best weapon they've got, but Zay Flowers adds to that as well. And, and to me, the way that the secondary played last week, which I'm hoping is just a, an uh, uncharacteristic blip when we look back on the season, they will need some more from that defensive front to make the job easier for those guys. Because while this defense has been opportunistic and we've seen them create turnovers, the consistent success that they've allowed for opposing offenses does make their job harder and does reduce the overall margin for error for the team, which against Baltimore is already quite small. Yeah, it's it's a tall task, and it is different. Pratt talked about that too. Is They have weapons all over now and, and more threats than they've ever had. I agree with you. It's, it starts with Mark Andrews. He's the best of them. Odell's coming into his own a bit. He stayed healthy and made some plays in the red zone over the past couple of weeks. Zay Flowers is just so electric. We, we got a, a taste of that week too, but I'm sure fantasy football listeners are aware of him. And so it's it's unique. And the other part of this, and a guy we talked about pre-draft, went undrafted, Keaton Mitchell. Yeah, man. Adds another element. Another element. In the past couple of weeks, he's been so explosive for them. And that gives them just another guy. There's not a lot of film on him. There aren't many touches, like single-digit touches over the past couple of weeks. But he's been so explosive and given them another element. And you have to prepare for him as well. And that's a big difference between week two and, and this week is, is that, having a guy like that alongside all the other weapons that we mentioned. So it's a really tall task. I'll say this. If you're going to – if you go out there like you did against the Texans from a, a run game standpoint, it will not be pretty. Keaton Mitchell is far more explosive than Devin Singletary. Uh, we know what Lamar Jackson brings. I don't have to go into that. So it's uh, they need to rebound. And I, I think a veteran-laden group like that, they're not going to panic. And I would expect them to be better. The difference is, even if you are better, you're facing a much better rushing offense. So it's it's got to be a lot better. I, I'm, I'm not ruling it out, and I'm not trying to sound too pessimistic, but I, I do think that my focus and we can get back to is is on the offense and this offense being able to to score regularly not have those lulls be consistent because they might have to go to M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore and put up like five TDs and, yeah. and I, I, I I don't know if that's realistic to expect especially if T isn't out there and I don't expect them to be but I think that's kind of the reality they're facing and it's the defense that Joe Burrows talked about is is hard for them to play against they make things hard. They disguise really, really well. Not many teams are going to get Joe Burrow to admit they disguise well enough that it's it makes life hard on him, right? He's so good pre-snap. On the road, it's a little bit harder, too. We've talked about that home field advantage and, and something that should have been and, and has been a weapon for Joe Burrow. But, you know, the, the closing thought for me on the defense, James, and I'm sure you'll get into some of the specifics with Kevin as well, is you look back at that winning streak last year, they were able to step up in, in big spots and they were able to overcome a lot last year. And if they're going to do that again this year, this is a, a great time to start. And, and they did it against really good teams last year. We've seen them do it against good offenses this year as well. Yes, they, they had some more guys healthy in those games against a, a familiar division opponent, though. No better time to step up and, and kind of get back to that. They've got to play us mentality that was so pervasive and and you know it goes through us kind of mentality where they are the kings of the afc north two-time defending champions now and and get back to that for the rest of the season if they want to get back to championship level afc north play they definitely need this game and you're right we, we should talk a little bit more about that offense as well because again with t higgins status in question joe burrow certainly a part of this the, the offense needs to play a more complete game and so we'll finish the show there, I think, coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. So maybe you think Joe Burrow is going to throw for more than two passing touchdowns, or Jamar Chase is going to have more than 75 receiving yards, both of which need to happen, by the way, if the Bengals are going to win on Thursday night. You put those in, and maybe you want to say Tanner Hudson is going to have more receiving yards than his projection. Boom. Those three, 
you can earn up to 25 times your money just like that. And prize picks, it's so simple. It's so easy to enter your picks. It just takes a few taps and you're already watching these games anyway. Enjoy DFS the way it should be with prize picks. You versus the projection. So check them out today at prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. So we talked a lot about Joe Burrow to start the show. Obviously, a huge factor is his level of play in this game. But James, with T. Higgins, obviously unlikely to play this week. Where do you start? Is it just Jamar Chase? Can can they get the ball going through Jamar Chase again? I know you referenced a six target number dealing with the back injury. I, I think that was part of it. Brian Callahan acknowledged that issue. But is is that where you start when you look at this offense? Can't be hurt on Thursday. Right. Guys that aren't playing are injured. If he's hurting, I, I hope you don't feel it for about three hours tomorrow because you have that mini buy and they need you. And I, I think his target share needs to be like 16, not six for them to have a shot. You know, Marlon Humphrey, we'll see if he plays. I, they need to find ways to get him the ball, get him the ball in space. He's their playmaker. He's the guy that's doing it. I know Tyler Boyd had a good game the other day and, and maybe he can make some plays. I would love for that to happen. Who else? Who else are you banking on? I, I'm dead serious. Like it is, it, 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 maybe Charlie Jones, and I, I think he will be active. Andre Yosevash, we'll see about that knee injury on a short week. Like there's just, there's a lot of questions right now. And the one thing, and I go back to the last time it felt like the Bengals' backs were truly, truly against the wall. They were one and three. They're going to Arizona, and Arizona is much different than Baltimore. Let me be very clear. But it was just kind of like, okay, bet against Joe and Jamar at your own risk. And, and Joe was coming back from that the calf, and there was a lot of questions because they got crushed by Tennessee. Well, now Chase, short week, really tough Baltimore team on the road. He's dealing with the back. Okay, well, doubt Joe and Jamar at your own risk. I still feel that way, but that's what I think it comes back to. Can Jamar go be dominant there? And can they put him in a position? to go dominate will joe be able to go uh, aggressive super joe when needed and i i think the answer is yes i still even if those two guys do that think it could be a close game and so uh, it, it could be a really epic game i have high expectations for those guys but it certainly starts there and it probably ends there i'm not going to come on and say they need to suddenly be great running the ball they're not i don't expect them to be on thursday night but i do expect joe and jamar to be great that was my follow-up question, James, was should they hand the ball off more to Joe Mixon? A lot of people think, hey, give Joe Mixon more opportunity. I've seen a lot of that, uh, you know, in, in my perusings of Bengals Twitter the last couple of days. Where I was going to go next was, yes, I agree with you. that. Well, real quick, what do you think about that? What do you think about that? Because I'm sure some of our listeners feel that way. Yeah, uh, You know, to, to, to my perspective, they're running in advantageous situations. They're, they're trying to run the ball mostly on early downs they're trying to run the ball when they're ahead of the chains on later downs a lot of their running plays are still rpos joe is choosing to throw a lot of those rpos they, they've built in that option for him for the most part that's going to work what we saw against the texans was them using that against using those tendencies against joe burrow a little bit do they need to call more runs i i don't know i i don't think that it's producing consistently enough for you to feel really good about that. Clearly, there's some some issues happening with the offensive line right now, which is where I was going to go next. But, um, you know, if those guys play better, maybe you can lean into it a little bit more. But if you're seeing that you're having issues in the offensive line, you're having issues where, you know, Joe Mixon had a couple of really good runs in that game, and he had a couple of runs that left something to be desired. Are, are, are there incentives enough? to take the ball out of Joe Burrow's hands in those situations and, and try to run the ball a little bit more when you're already frail. That's when it's really hard, right? In a close game, maybe you can do it a little bit more if, if you're within three, if you're leading, and, and maybe that opens something up for your offense and, and forces the defense to respect the run a little bit more. But when I look at the Baltimore front, I don't see a front that's going to make running the ball a very appetizing option either. 
in, in terms of efficiency and trying to stay ahead of the change, which might be, you know, more important than normal this week as well. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that all off season, we talked about an explosive element and then wanting to find that in the running game. It hasn't been there and it's not there. And I, I think people have a view of what Joe has been this year. That's different than what it's been in Joe Mixon. And part of that's the offensive line. Part of that is him. Part of that is their run game and their uh, not being able to go under shotgun early on. All of those things. It's it's all mixed in. But it's enough to where I'm like, all right, do enough to keep them honest-ish. But that's it. And that's how the team feels too. Because they they will show you. Joe Mixon will not get 25 carries on, on Thursday unless something goes way not according to plan. And, and, and they're up by a ton or... They're just trying to get the hell out of there for one reason or another. I just don't see that. So what are they? They're this pass first team. Well, the, the other part of this after that, we've addressed the Joe Mixon part. They're going to need someone not named Jamar Chase to make big plays. And last week it it was Tyler Boyd to a degree. But I, I think whether it's Andre Yosavash, again, hopefully his knee is okay. Charlie Jones, if he gets activated, and I feel like he's going to. I'm not trying to jinx him. I feel like he's going to. I don't even think he knows, to be quite honest with you right now, as we record this on, on Tuesday night. And they could wait until the day of, I believe, uh, for Charlie. So we might not know until Thursday, even though he'll know by then, of course. But someone else is going to, if they win this game, and Charlie did in week two, by the way, the punt return touchdown, that needs to happen. Something like that, where you get a, a non-traditional touchdown from one of these guys. And it might just be a deep ball to Charlie, whatever, where he breaks a tackle and scores. Whatever it is, it's going to have to be something like that, I think, uh, for this offense to to get them going and to keep the Ravens thinking about someone not named Jamar Chase because they're going to throw body after body after body at him and try to hit him and try to be physical, and it, it's going to be a tough game. Which is where Joe Burrow is going to have to be able to elevate, guys. And he did a lot of that. We saw him do a lot of that. The other part of this is, of course, you know, don't doubt Jamar, don't doubt Joe but can the offensive line do enough? Because there were too many times that that offensive line just got beaten immediately and Joe Burrow just didn't have a shot or the running play didn't have a shot. And they had been playing better. We were starting to feel better about that group. There were anchor issues. They had issues with power. They're, they're getting knocked back at multiple positions in that game. Can't do that again. And, and Baltimore's got that really good front. They've got good blitzers. They've got varied blitzers. They've been able to catch Joe Burrow off guard. So you do need your guys up front to play really well in this game as well. So the, the don't bet against Joe and Jamar thing it can come to life, right? And, and that's a big piece of the puzzle, as it always is. But with a really good front six, seven, whatever you want to call it, that Baltimore presents you with. Yeah. Yeah, that's Joe Burrow. All eyes on you. Prime time under the lights, on the road. I've said Superman references, but maybe you need to go super villain in, in, in Baltimore and and go there, and, and obviously they'll be the villains. They'll be getting booed in a, in a crazy environment. I do think Boyd will respond, by the way. Just throw that out there. I, I, I think he's he's made of the right stuff to respond the right way. We'll see if he does. And um, yeah. Shorthanded. We'll see if the Ravens are shorthanded. We can have more uh, updates, the latest injury updates, when we do the crossover with Kevin. But it, this is a weird week, Jake, because you're traveling somewhere in uh, in Canada. If you see the pictures that Jake's posting, it's it's like a dungeon in Canada, and, and I'm saying Canada because I don't want to reveal where you actually are, but uh, you can if you want. But uh, you're traveling. Short week. Our crossover is happening technically after our game preview, which is what this is. It's uh, a lot going on, but uh, it, it's a lot of fun. I'm not. I'm, I'm just happy I didn't have to play Sunday and then play a game again on Thursday because I, I know some of these rookies. I was talking to DJ Ivy, and he's like, man, this is such a quick turnaround. <laughs> it's his first Thursday nighter. Yeah, Thursday night football, man. It, it's never a game that I like. It really isn't. Thursday night football, when the Bengals have to play in it, I feel for them every time. I feel for every NFL team that has to play these Thursday night games on short weeks because it's so hard on the body. You get one day, sort of, one and a half days maybe to prepare. The Bengals are flying out as people are listening to this episode. 
to play the next day. But then they do get the mini buy. And if they can get some guys healthy, and if they can sneak a win out of this game, that could set them up for that home stretch, right? And so that would be the ideal case. And we'll have that crossover coming up for our next episode. We'll have you covered after the game as well. It's a woo game. It's a woo game. I'm declaring it. It's a woo game. You know I will have a very hard time doing that in my current surroundings and not making some people very upset around me. We'll get you out of the dungeon. It's a woo game, baby. Would be. Would be. I think that's fair to say. So make sure you stay tuned for the crossover coming up tomorrow that can serve as our final game preview of the week. Might get a prediction from James Rapine in that episode, and then we'll have you covered after the game as well. Until then, thanks for listening to this episode of the Lockdown Bengals podcast. Who day? And have a good one.